Welcome, welcome everyone to God in the Midst radio broadcast. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. Praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Let's get a Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This 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 is an awesome day and a marvelous day. Our, our Sunday school lesson for today is going to come from 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter. 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter. So before we begin our reading of our Sunday school lesson, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for being God and being God all by yourself. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning, clothing us in our right minds and giving us a reasonable portion of health and strength. Lord, we thank you for the activities of our limbs. We thank you for the roof over our heads, <clears throat> uh, shoes and clothes on our bodies and and then, Lord, we thank you for food on our table. Thank you, Lord, for all that you already have done by just touching us one more time on this side of glory. So, Lord, we give you praise this day, and we just ask you now, dear Lord, to just bless us as we get ready to study your word in Sunday school, Lord. You say what well, two or three are gathered together in your name, that you are in the midst. So, God, we welcome you into the midst of us right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way. Let your word go forth and not return to you void. That somebody might be encouraged. That somebody might be encouraged to go on just a little while longer, Lord. Thank you, Lord, right now. And then, Lord, if you so pleases you, dear Heavenly Father, bless someone that they might hear this word and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and give their life to him and continue on in the discipleship of being a good Christian. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for this right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Our scripture, as I said, comes from 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6, and we're going to start at verse 11. 1 Timothy chapter 6, starting at verse 11. But you, O oh man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, good, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Jesus Christ who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate that you keep his commandments without spot, blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ appears, which he will manifest in his own time. He who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, dwell in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. Now, verse 17, it says, Command those who are rich in the present age not to be haughty nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in living God, and, and, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good that they may be rich in good works and ready to, to give willingly to share, store up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. 
verse 20. O Timothy, guard what was committed to your trust. Avoid the profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge by professing it. Some have strayed concerning the faith. Grace, grace, grace be with you. Amen. Amen. That's the reading of our text. And our title for today's lesson is The Good Fight of Faith. The Good Fight of Faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Our key verse for this lesson is verse 12. Verse 12 is our key verse. Listen to it again from the New King James Version. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, the 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 message Bible it says it like this: Run hard and fast in the faith, seizing the eternal life, the life you were called to, the life you also you I mean the life you so fervently embraced in the presence of so many witnesses. Oh yeah 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 yeah, and and so this this. This key, this verse, this key verse, and this whole lesson is all built on never give up following Jesus. You you gotta fight it. You gotta fight it, cause cause the devil is fighting us on every side. He's walking around like a roaring lion, trying to take us out, trying trying to move us away from the faith. Not that we can lose our salvation. No, no. God, God has already secured that. But but whether or not we can live it out in, in, the, in the land of the living. And so, as we look at this lesson, we have some lesson aims that we want to look at. And, and, and we're going to have some facts. We're going we're gonna to list the attitudes and action Paul encouraged Timothy to maintain as a man of God. Secondly, the biblical principles we're going to look at is to explain the long, I got to say the long range view of a lifetime of faithful behavior. And then, as we leave this lesson, we want to encourage you to have a daily application from this lesson, to have an example of how one's faith will influence his and her actions in the weeks ahead. Now, this lesson, this lesson, the 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 um, outline for this lesson. I found I found kind of hard. I found it kind of hard. You say, but this seemed like a simple outline, and and it is, and it is in one sense. If I if I took verses eleven through through uh, uh, see sixteen, I, I I got a beautiful outline for that. The the outline for that for that lesson is is to to flee, to focus, and to fight. To flee, to focus. And to fight that that and, and I, I want to concentrate on that part of the lesson. I I, I but say I'm gonna do that last. <laughs> I, I got another part. The verses 17 through 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 uh uh, uh 21. The, this this is dealing with a little bit of same same thing is dealing with, but it, it's just approaching it a little different. So so when I look at those verses, when I look at those verses, I'm looking at them from the standpoint of of of, of um, instructions for the rich. That's verses 17 to 19, and then uh, guarding the deposited. Of your faith. That's 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 verses twenty and twenty one. So now let, let's set the background. Let's set the background for this lesson. Let's set the background for this lesson. This 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 is a letter that 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 Paul wrote to Timothy. Timothy was was a young believer 
in Jesus Christ, probably in his late 20s at this time, or early 30s. And Paul had, had, had wrote, wrote him this letter because he had left Timothy at this point and responsible for the church at Ephesus. And so he wrote him a letter to give him encouragement. His, his, he, uh, Timothy had, you know, what, what had, had been a follower because his, his, his grandmama and his, and his mama had taught him the word of God and then Paul came along and, and encouraged him in the faith and then took him on his missionary journeys with him. And now Timothy, Timothy, Timothy was now the one who, who was responsible for the church at Ephesus. And he was having some issues. He was having some issues because first they thought he was too young to be anybody's pastor, you know. And then not only that, they they that there were issues going on in, in this in this area of Ephesus. Ephesus was a great place. This is where where uh uh, uh, uh they the the idol god uh, Diana or Artemis, however you want to call her, she she was in place and people worshipped her. And, and but 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 now they they had to worship Jesus the true and living God and not idols. And, and, and then in addition to all of that, uh, there were Jews in the area that fought Paul for his teaching of Jesus Christ. So, so there was all this struggle going on. You had the Gentile way, you had the Jewish way, and, and now here are the people of the way up in here. And, and it was problems going on. And there was this belief that we called it Gnosticism, uh, where, where folks believed that if they obtain knowledge, especially knowledge of, of God's word, that they were more superior than anybody else. And this was a problem. This was a problem that he had to deal with. This young pastor had to deal with all these different type of people. And then there was this issue of of that if you obtained a whole lot, if you had a whole lot of money, you were a bit more blessed than anybody else. Oh, he had to deal with some stuff. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? We still deal with some of these same issues today. And so, when we pick up our text at verse 11, he says, but you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. And he says, fight the good fight of faith. Oh, hallelujah. So, 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 so in this, this first beginning of this text, you got to see, he says, but you, oh man of God, flee these things. Flee these things. What are the things that he is to flee? He's to flee the error of false teaching. He's, he's to flee those who are going around with a greedy mindset. Because back in verse 10, it says, it says, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Not that money is wrong. We all need money and God, God blesses us with that. But, but he says the love of it is the root of all evil for which many ha ha have strayed away from the faith in their greediness and piercing themselves through with many sorrows. Greediness, loving money. And all of that, 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 that harmful lust that, that draws men to destruction. He says, flee from that. Flee from it. Now, 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 I'm going to stop right there because I got to come back now because he said after he's talking about flee, he starts talking about focus. But before I go into flee and focus and fighting, I got to go to the end of the text. And you say, but, but you, that's all out of order. I say, yeah, but I, I want to close on, on, on being focused and fighting. I, I, that's where I want to close at. And so, 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 so I'm going to skip down to verse 17. And he said, command those who are rich in the present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in living God, uh, uh, but in the living God 
who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good that they may be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold of eternal life. Oh, hallelujah. This is the instruction to the rich. We already said you got to flee the love of money, but then he's here to tell you in verse 17 and on down to, to 19 what you do when you are rich. What do you do when you have amassed some wealth? What do you do when you got something above just having a place to live and food on your table? What, what do you do? He says, now, what, this is what you need to do. Don't get halted. Don't be prideful. Don't be looking down your nose on people. Just because you drive a BMW, don't look down on somebody that's just driving a hoopty or even walking and getting here and there. Because you should not trust in the uncertain riches. Because riches come and riches go. I have a co-worker. We had a conversation this week. Um, and, and, and he went from being at a point where he was about getting ready to buy. He had already bought a jet. He was going to buy him a helicopter. He was getting ready to buy him an island. And he lost it all every ounce of it. And he's working now in, in my area. And, and, and he says, well, you know, this is a good job. I'm actually making more money uh, as a salary than I ever made in my life other than when I own my company. And, and he said, and the Lord led me here. He said, I'm on my drive to Huntsville. While I'm on my drive, I didn't know where I was going to live. I didn't know where I was going to work. I had no real connections in this town. And I'm driving. And I pick up and get a phone call. And they was calling me for an interview that next morning. He said, all I had at that point in my life was a pair of jeans. I, all I had was a couple of pair of jeans and a couple of shirts. Nothing for an interview. He said, I had, when I got in town, I found the Salvation Army. I went and got me a nice little Salvation Army suit. And I went to my interview and got the job. He said, that ain't nobody but God. He said, because when I, when I had it all, I wasn't haughty. I wasn't prideful. It's all the issues that cause this stuff to happen. But, but, but riches come and riches go. But God gives us riches and all things to enjoy. So he said, let them, the word says, let them do good. That they may be rich in good works and ready to give and willing to share. Storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold of eternal life. And so. When, when we look at our ambitions and our desires to, to have money and to gain riches, know that, that, that their, your primary reason for getting it is to share. Hallelujah. And then now, now that's the instruction to the rich. Then verses 20 and, 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 and all the way down to 21 says, Oh, Timothy, guard what was committed to your trust. Avoid profane and the idle babbling and, 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 and contradiction of what is falsely called knowledge. But profess it. By professing it, some have strayed away concerning the faith. God, be grace, be, be, be with you. In other words, guard your faith. Guard your faith. Guard your faith. Don't get caught up in all this different arguments. I had a dream the other day, and it was it was like, wow, God, what are you telling me? He said, I wasn't even able to argue with somebody in my dream. I couldn't even get the words out. And he said, and I said, Lord, what was that all about? He said, don't be arguing with folks. Let, let your light shine. They, they don't argue with them. Don't, 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 don't try to try to have a a a, a, a a deadly exchange with them. 
You're an older man now. You got more wisdom. Let them argue with themselves. <laughs> I said, okay, Lord, I got you. I got you. Because you know what I can do. That's what God was telling me. And, 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 and as I tease people all the time, I know God got you. God got me. God got you. God got us. And we have to have that mindset and guard that kind of profession, that confession. So now, so now I've ended the, got to the end of the chapter of what we were supposed to talk about. Now I want to go back up to verse 11 and concentrate on it for a little while down to verse 16. I, I love this part of the lesson. So he says, but you old man, you, old man of God, flee these things. We already talked about the things he ought to flee. But he says, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. He, 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 he says to him, look, man, I need you to, 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 to focus. After you didn't flee these things, I need you to focus. What, what are you going to focus on? He says, I want you to focus on righteousness, goodness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Now, these words, these words, these words mean a whole lot. Righteousness is to live right. And, and, and by living right, by doing right, the right things and obeying Jesus Christ. Godliness is living holy. By respecting God. That means living set apart. Faith is, is, is not like we talk about, well, I believe I got faith. No, it, it's deeper than that. This faith that we're talking about here is believing and trusting in God for everything. And then love. Loving, loving is, 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 and, and forgiving goes hand in hand. You got to love and you got to forgive others as Christ has loved and forgave you. Patience means to not, not rush to do something or to get it over with. Take time. Take time to help others. And never quit. Never give up. Keep persevering. Through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. I learned to depend on God. And then finally, this gentleness or some sort of meekness. This is showing kindness to others. And so when you when you look at these six things that 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 that, that Paul encouraged Timothy to focus in on. He's saying to Timothy, the first three, that's your focus on God. You, you want to live holy because you want to worship him in spirit and in truth. You want to believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And, 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 and you want to be righteous. You want to live right. You you want to you want to be able to say WWJD what would Jesus do and that's what you do Those first 3 focus in on God The last 3 focus in on others loving people being patient with people being gentle with people And if you look at look at all six of these together it captures the golden rule. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart and soul and your neighbor as yourself. Oh, that's what our focus ought to be on. Our focus is on to, be on to love the Lord thy God with all your heart and soul. And then love your neighbor as yourself. That's it. If you focus on that every day, all day, your life would be so much better. You, these are keys to, to, to success in life. 
fleeing from mess, focusing in on God, focusing in on being a blessing to others. Now he says, after you didn't flee and after you didn't focus, now you got to fight. You got to fight. Like the, like the girl said in, in Color Purple, I always got to fight. You always got to fight. Yeah, you got to fight. You got to fight. And he says, fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. And this 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 fighting is 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 is, is agonizing. It's agonizing. It is it is it's 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 both a military term and, and it's both an athletic term. It's 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 it's, it's endeavoring to, to, to describe the, the concentration and, and the discipline and the extreme effort needed to win. The Winter Olympics going on. And you see these men and women out there dancing on the ice or racing on the ice. And then you see the other ones out on their snowboards and their skis and, and then the bobsledders. I mean, these people have trained. They, they have fought. They have agonized. They have disciplined themselves to get ready for this event so that they might win a goal. Bronze. Silver. They're trying to win. Fight the good fight of faith. In other words, keep going like the Energizer Bunny. Keep going and going and going. Be like that Weeble. Weebles wobble, but they don't stay down. Be like that old punching a uh, 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 bag, a punching balloon we used to have that had the sand at the bottom and you hit him and he bounced back up. You hit him again and he bounced back up. That's how we have to be in fighting the good fight of faith. When something attacks our faith, take the punch and bounce back up. We got to keep going and going. And he said, if you fight the good fight of faith, he said, lay hold on eternal life to which you also were called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. This, 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 this laying hold is to, to get a grip on the reality that you're saved. You have eternal life. And that, that, that your eternal life is, 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 is in God's hands. It's eternal. And when you minister from the standpoint that I know I'm saved, not by my own works, not by what I do, I'm saved because what Jesus Christ did on the cross. He hung, he bled, and he died and got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. I know he got up. And I believe in him and I confess it with my mouth and I believe it in my heart. I know I'm saved and I'm going to live my life like one who believes. And I confess that thing in front of many witnesses. And he goes on and he said, this is, this is why you're fighting. You got to understand this is why you fight." It's not, not because you just, because of you, it's because of what Jesus did. He fought. Oh, yes, he did. He, he, he fought the good fight. Listen to what he says. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things before Christ Jesus, who witnessed the good confession before 
Pontius Pilate. Jesus told Pontius Pilate, even in the face of death, my kingdom is not of this world. Mm -mm. I, I have a kingdom, but it's not of this world. Pontius Pilate didn't like that thing. He, he went, man, I'm going to wash my hands of you. you know, but yet and still, Pontius Pilate killed him. Along with all the other Jews and all, all of us hung him up on that cross. And he said, Lord, forget them for they know not what they do. And when he gave up his up the ghost, he he. he that into your hands, oh Lord, I commend my spirit. Mm, mm, mm. He took a big, big, big punch. But three days later, he got up out of that grave. Oh, hallelujah. With all power in heaven and earth, that's fighting the good fight. And he said, I want you to fight this fight. That, that you, the same one that Jesus fought, that you can keep this commandment without spot, blemish, until our Lord Jesus returns. Oh, hallelujah. He is coming back. And he should find us, all of us who are part of the church, all of us who are part of the universal body, of Jesus Christ. He should find us without spot or blemish. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he is coming back. And it says in verse 15, which he will manifest in his own time, he who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Yeah, he knows when he's coming back. It's not for us to predict it, not for us to say. He hasn't revealed it to anyone. But we can trust and believe that he's coming back. And we need to be on guard, doing what we're supposed to do, knowing that he is coming back one day. He's king of kings. He's lord of lords. And it says... We're doing this because who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable life, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. That's who we serve. We serve the risen Savior. We serve the mighty God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to his name. That's why we can fight the fight. I was thinking, as I just said, that reminds me of Star Wars. And they talking about, in Star Wars, they talk about the force within. You know, you get the force. You have the force behind you. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. That's fiction. But according to the word of God, he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. So we have what it takes to fight the good fight of faith. Because the one we believe in is Jesus and all that he has done for us. Jesus loves us. So much that he was willing to die for our sins. And he says he's returning one day to get us. Jesus is the only ruler, the only potentate, king of kings and lord of lords. Jesus alone has authority over everything. Jesus alone is immortal. He is God and has no beginning and no end. Paul, Paul wanted Timothy and want us today to grasp the long-range view 
a faithful behavior. He wants us to show him the value of fighting the good fight of faith. Laying hold of eternal life and, 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 and persevering until Christ returns. Life is full of surprises and, and disappointments. And often, when we deal with these disappointments, we're tempted to give in and, and to give up our pursuit of holiness and faithfulness, but, but there's a good reason to remain steadfast and unmovable and always abounding in the faith because your work is not in vain. And one day, one day, we who are faithful will stand before the Lord and hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up a little higher and I'll make you ruler over many. I don't know about you, but I want to hear them words from the Lord. Because those words make every hardship and every painful moment that we go through in this in this life, it'll make it all a distant memory. Because we will be with the Lord forever and ever. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is a wonderful lesson. Wonderful lesson. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight it. Some things you got to flee from. Focus in on God and focus in on helping others. And fight the good fight of faith and persevere. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for your word from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Verses, particularly verse 12. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Let us pray. Dear Father God, help us to fight the good fight of faith and honor you in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Before I close this broadcast here on Facebook, I want to encourage you and those that are listening um, on the conference call and those that will be listening to these, these recordings later, I want to encourage you to begin the race. To begin running your course by giving your life to Jesus. You can try everything else and it just seems like you're on a treadmill just spinning around you ain't you hadn't been getting anywhere and, and you've been wondering why well you don't have the power of jesus christ living inside you and you need to give your life to him you need to surrender to him and he'll give you the power and the strength to fight the good fight of faith it all starts by you believing what he's already done for you Jesus already died on the cross for your sins and mine. He got up out of that grave with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. Our job is to believe it in our hearts and confess it with our mouth. So let us pray. Because the word of God says, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, become the Lord of my life to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. 
Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. We are going to close Facebook here in a second. We thank you for listening in and those who are listening later, we thank you. Please share this with your friends and on your Facebook page. For those who are listening in on the conference call and those who want to have a conversation with us, we're going to have an interaction with each other on the conference call, on the Get Em Radio conference call. Call 619-639-4733. Again, 619-639-4733. Um, if you ever want to find this message again, you can always... Uh, Search on um, Get Em Radio. If you put Get Em Radio in and, and look for um, our broadcast and look for the good fight of faith, you can get to this message. Facebook, you have, be blessed. Until next week, be blessed and always be a blessing.